Hi friends! Today is going to be the cozy Christmas book tag. This tag was originally created by Call Me After Coffee and I will be linking her original video in the description box down below for you to peruse if you so choose. I will also be putting the questions down there for you. Uh, in case you would like to do this yourself. So this one is much shorter than last week's, so let's get to it. Question one, Twinkling Lights, what is the most beautiful book you own? We're gonna talk about two books today because one we just hauled recently, so you guys have seen it and me fangirling about it forever. Um, that is the anniversary edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. It's an illustrated anniversary edition. She's got painted edges, she's uh, silver on the top and the bottom with a floral paint. Also she got this going on on her hardcover and then also there are illustrations inside the book. So again we've talked about that one recently and I love it, it's fantastic. In pages like she just real pretty but since we've talked about that one so recently I wanted to share another one that um, is also from this year but not quite as recently and that is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. I love the cover of this. The cover was what originally made me want to pick this up. Also the word witches because you know witches are my jam uh, but the underside of this is beautiful. It is just this conglomerate of flowers and butterflies and it's just very very aesthetically pleasing. I have quite a lot of like special editions of books or books that I think are just pretty as far as like The Nature of Witches. This was just the original first publication like that's what they look like. So uh, these are just the two that are hitting me especially hard right now. I think my favorites kind of cycle out so. Next is The Perfect Tree. Will you pay more to get the prettiest edition? Well, if my Witchlands collection says anything about me, it says that I will throw money at different editions of books. Because, you know, originally we had this edition of Truth Witch. This was the first publication. This is the original edition. And then at some point I was like, you know, that's really pretty, but I also really like the UK hardbacks. I mean, look at them. They're gorgeous. And then someone showed me the UK paperbacks and I was like, yeah, okay, here for it. Absolutely. And then when Blood Witch came out, they redid all of the covers with the same artist. And so naturally I had to get the new cover of Truth Witch. Though to be fair, this one is my least favorite of all of the ones that I have. Um, but you know, I had to have a full set. Like you couldn't not have a full set. I mean, that would be crazy. And then, you know what I decided? I decided that I really needed to have this Serbian edition that I can't read because it's in Serbian. But she pretty. So the answer to that question is yes, I will in fact spend extra money on pretty editions of books. Next is Crackling Fire. What book makes you feel warm and cozy? And for that I went with The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. I have talked at length about this book on the channel before so I will keep this as concise as possible. Uh, but this book follows Nina Hill who is very bookish. She grew up with just herself and her mother and a nanny. Her mother kind of off put her on the nanny when she was very young in her toddler stage and she has grown her whole life. Basically just her and this nanny being very close. The nanny has since moved away so she works at this bookshop. She lives a very solitary life and has kind of like a very set set of things that she likes to do as far as like um, after work activities and exercise and trivia club and things of that nature. And it is sprung upon her one day that her father that she didn't know passed away and because her father lived until he was in his 70s and he had multiple wives over the years. He basically when he died Nina inherited entire families worth of family. You know different brothers and sisters from different ages of this man's life. 
everywhere from being 20, 25 years older than Nina, clear down to her youngest sister who is about 15 to 20 years younger than her. And because she has, has that big group of family, there's also nieces and nephews and great nieces and great nephews and cousins and aunts and uncles and just all of these people that are being brought into her life. And what really just like gives me that super warm fuzzy feeling about this book is because all of these different people have seen her father over different points in his life and because he lived so long, it really goes to show how different people all have a different viewpoint of us. Like me as one solitary person, if you ask 20 different people throughout my life what kind of person I am, all 20 of them would have a different answer because we are all evolving, all always changing. So there's different viewpoints of us throughout all of these years and Nina is getting all of these viewpoints of her father at one time. And it's just so beautifully done. Is this book also a romance? Yes. Is this book more focused on the romance than the family? Also yes. But I really, 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 really love this book. It's one of my all time favorites and I highly recommend it. Next question, Knee High Socks, what is the longest book you've read? According to Goodreads, the longest book that I have read is Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. This is the third book in the Dark Artifices series. This says it's 880 pages. I don't know what Goodreads says, but according to Goodreads, this is the longest book. She hefty. I stand by the fact that on page 386, we get a part two of this book. And I stand by the fact that I think this book should have been sorted into two books, should have been separated into two books, because A, that would have been a fan-fucking-tastic cliffhanger, and also, why does anybody need a book this big? And also, like, for sales purposes, not that Cassie Clare needs to sell more books, because obviously she doing all right, but, like, smartly, you would have separated it at that point. It's a great stopping point. It would have been fantastic, but I digress. This is the longest book I've read according to Goodreads. This next question, I'm gonna take you for a little bit of a ride, but essentially it is ugly sweaters. What's the ugliest book you own? So for this, I looked through my shelves and there's nothing that I own that is particularly ugly, but there is, however, a book that I love that I will not buy because the cover makes me viscerally nauseous. So that felt like the perfect answer for this question. And that book is Lobizona by Romina Garber. Uh, not a huge fan of Casadora either, but Lobizona in particular, I don't know if it's the coloring or the way that things are put together. I'll have it on screen for you so you can see it. I don't know if it's the coloring or just the way that things are like kind of meshed together in that lower collage of things. But looking at this cover, actually makes me physically ill. Like it makes me nauseous. I hate it. And I know that it's like people love this cover. People talk about like how different it is and how like it's it's not she's not like other girls. And I get that. But I hate it. And I hate that there's a book out there that I love that I will not buy because I hate the cover so much. That's a really weird reason not to buy a book that you love, but I just I can't do it. I was kind of hoping that it would get a cover redesign when it came out as a paperback, as most books do uh, anymore, especially well-selling YA, but uh, I don't think that's the case. So, I don't know. I mean, I own it in audiobook, so, I mean, I do technically own it, but not the physical copy because it makes me physically ill. So, that. The next question is a Blizzards, a book that is set in winter or that gives you chills or has dark vibes. For all of those things, I went with Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. This book follows Nora, who lives in this very secluded area around a lake, and her family has basically been witches for as long as anyone can remember, and the people that kind of live around them, you know, they think she's weird. They think her whole family's weird, but they kind of just leave them alone. There are these woods near the lake that her family knows, like, a specific way that you can get into the woods and there is this place in the woods where lost things go. 
and it's set in the winter time the like the lake is frozen it's very cold there's a blizzard they get snowed in it's a romance like there's a lot of things that go on with this it has a weird creepy twist ending um that both does and does not make sense um it it's an interesting book it's an interesting read for the winter and also the cover is gorgeous so and the final question is home for the holidays which is kind of a question for rereaders and it's Basically, is there a book that really makes you feel like you are coming home? Going off of the rules that I have always held for this channel, that there is one particular series that I don't mention in any kind of a tag because I feel like it is so overly mentioned and now we don't mention it for other reasons, though it would technically fit this answer, I went with a semi-definitive list of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. Um, we talked about this in last week's tag video. We talked about this a lot this year, every year for the past three or four years. We talk about this book a lot is basically where I'm going with that, which means you all should know. Um, this book follows Esther, who is from a family of cursed individuals. They believe that her grandfather met death when I believe it was either the Vietnam or the Korean War. I don't remember which. Basically, there was a war. Her grandfather met death and then her family was cursed by being killed by their greatest fear. And... So everyone in their family has some great fear and that fear is what kills them to the point that she, like she had a cousin who was terrified of bees and he was killed by bees. And there's another person that they talk about as well that was like killed by their fear. And so for Esther, she has a semi-definitive list of worst nightmares, which is a list of all of the things that she could be afraid of. And so because she could be afraid of those things, she just completely avoids them. And her father is an agoraphobe and he lives in their basement. He had a stroke and was in their basement and has never come back up from the basement. Her brother Eugene is afraid of the dark or rather the things that are in the dark that he can't see because it's dark. There are demons in Eugene's world. And her mother is afraid of having bad luck because this curse doesn't only affect the people who are born into this family but the people who marry into it as well. So her mother is afraid of having bad luck. They have a rooster that lives in their house who her mother believes is a gremlin and will one day make a great sacrifice to bring the family good luck. It's a hot mess, y'all. It deals with a lot of darker themes like domestic abuse, attempted suicide. Uh, there's a lot of things in here and it is just one of the best books that I've ever read and it's one of the few books that when I read the first time, I really felt like I could understand like my own anxiety and depression from these people and I do want to address that this book does in the beginning it does very much seem like this family is brushing off mental illness by saying that there's a curse that gives them these great fears but I, it is addressed throughout the novel and I think that's important to mention uh, because I do know people that have put this down very early on because they felt like it wasn't addressing things as well as it could and because our characters have to have character growth it's going to be that way as the story starts so that the character can grow um, so it is something that changes as the story goes on um, but I just there's this really amazing relationship between Eugene and Esther and Esther's best friend who is their best friend collectively. Um, there's this great relationship between their family, between Esther and her grandfather, between her grandfather and death. You get these clips of her grandfather meeting death throughout the years. There is a romance. It is kind of integral to the plot. Uh, we start off with Esther, you know, meeting her childhood crush on a, a bus stop. And he robs her and takes her fruit roll up and $20 and I don't there's a list of things that he takes but yeah like this book is just so fantastic so wonderful the very first time I read it I read it physically finished the book immediately purchased the audiobook and listened to it again on audio and then listened to it again about six months later I have probably read this book six or seven times in the last five years um, it is a constant reread for me. I love it more than most other books in my life. And I don't know why exactly it just hits the way it hits, but it, it does. So, ta-da. That is the entirety of this 
book tag. Again, I will link it in the description box down below for you if you would like to check it out. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, including the remainder of Advent, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!